completely hypocritical for big media to think they can pump messages into our heads 24-7, yet we don't have the right to then take those messages and actually comment on them critically. Like that, that's just absolute and utter hypocrisy to me. Now there are limits. Like I wouldn't think it would be right to like screen the entire Godfather and then it ends with my face going, damn, that was a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> Give me ten dollars. <laughs> you know, like that's not really fair use. But in the context of actually commenting critically, I think it's a very important thing to fight and preserve. Now that I've said something really nice about the Media Education Foundation, another thing about them is that they're very strict and very serious that these films need to be 60 minutes long. And actually, the reason why Jim Brown is with the credits is because I needed to, I fought to squeeze it in there. Like, like all right, we're gonna use every possible second to show stuff. <laughs> so people might very well have questions about, well, why isn't there anything about Althea Gibson in there? Or why isn't there anything about Kurt Flood and where is Roberto Clemente? And all I can say to you is, yes, I agree. And there was a first draft of the script, which would have made this into like, I don't know, eyes on the prize. Like, <laughs> volumes and volumes of stories and hours and hours about sports and politics. And they looked at the script and said, this is great. We're going to turn this into 60 minutes, though. And you need to sort of be at peace with that. And at first, that was kind of a bitter pill to swallow. And I'm sure people might have questions like, well, why didn't you include this or that? And I, I totally respect those questions. But I actually have come to think, now that it's been out a few months, that there's a greater good in having it be 60 minutes. And I really felt it when we showed it at a, at a juvenile uh, detention facility outside of DC. And just that it, it's short enough and digestible enough that I think it has the capacity to reach a broader audience than if I was doing like the Showa of sports movies. So that's what I think makes it something that's effective and good. And, and if there are professors here or teachers here, something that I think would make it an effective classroom tool as well. So with that, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. Um, please no questions about the size of my head. Um, I'm, I'm not Barry Bonds. I'm no steroids at work. Yes, ma'am. seen the film, I'm guessing he's not. We, we had a whole discussion today about this, because Damian Thomas is a, um, a professor at the University of Maryland. He did a great presentation today about Jackie Robinson and the Cold War, which was terrific. And we, we did this whole conversation today about the fact that we, we love sports. And we also get this question a lot, like, OK, you're talking about sports in this critical way. How can you watch it without uh, projectile vomiting constantly? <laughs> and given what, and it's like, given what you know about sports, as if it's you know, Mordor or something, given what you know. And, and it's like, to, to us, it, it, it's pretty basic. I mean, it's like, critical thinking is a good thing. And watching things smartly is a good thing. And I think there's something to be said for not just sports, but all aspects of culture. And, and approaching it from the point of view is, we don't want to reject this, we want to reclaim it. And I think having a sense that sports is something that we can fight for, that it's, it's contested space. And what we need are more voices who are looking at it critically, who are actually in the arena of sports, who are talking about sports, who are watching sports, who are um, having back and forth with people about sports. I mean. We had the most amazing Super Bowl party this year that we did in D.C. It was a blast. And we, we had a Super Bowl party that was held by the Iraq veterans against the war. And it was called an anti-militarism Super Bowl party. And it was a blast. And people had a great time watching the game while at the same time calling out every time there was just like a cheap uh, advertisement for, for the U.S., uncritical advertisement for the U.S. military. And at the same, and it was great watching it with a bunch of vets because it really gives you this sense of like, ah, yeah, screw this. These people who really know what the military is like, which is not the way that you know the networks were showing it. But then also just having Green Bay there as well, and the fact like Green Bay being a team that has the best owner in sports, all 112,000 of them, being this collectively 
own team, nonprofit team. I mean, it opened the way for political discussions to be had that really were able, you're able to connect with people in a whole variety of ways, which is, I think, very dynamic and very interesting and something we could do a, a much better job of doing. I mean, there's so much interesting politics happening in sports, and it's like, it's such a great, I mean, I think it's the closest thing to like a lang national language that we have in this country. So the ability to be able to have discussions with people about homophobia, for example, but doing it through the lens of the recent fines in the NBA on Kobe Bryant and Joe Kim Noah, for example, and using that as a starting point to actually talk about homophobia, like things like that to me are, are very powerful tools that we should use. And there's a question in the back, but did you want to ask me? I did, but that's take the back first. Okay. Yeah, it seems like uh, back in the 60s and 70s, you mentioned a lot of great athletes like Jim Brown and Ollie and Bill Russell that spoke out on certain issues. And today, there's so much money that we don't have as many athletes speaking out against the different causes. Do you think money's gotten so big that you won't see um, athletes become political? Well, no, because a couple of things. One is that I don't think it's about the money. Um, I think it has much more to do with uh, the level of exploitation that athletes receive. I mean, if you look at some of the things that have been said recently by NFL players as they've been locked out, and their reality, which is they have three and a half year playing careers, they die 20 years before a typical um, American male. Roger Goodell said yesterday that he was putting back on the table an insistence for a longer season after he had taken that off in earlier negotiations. And Troy Palomalu, I wish I could get it off the top of my head, but he just said this quote in an interview about why they, they felt like they needed to stand strong against the owners, where Troy Palomalu said, um, he's the all-pro safety for the Steelers, he said, a lot of people think this is about billionaires versus millionaires, but it's not. It's about a broader thing that's happening in this country where rich people think they can get away with absolutely anything. And if it has to be NFL players to be the ones who stand up and say that's not the way it has to be, then that's just what it's going to have to be. And so it's, you think, it's like, oh, Troy Palomalo, wasn't he doing head and shoulders commercials a few months ago? And it's, it's this idea that, like, that I, I think that there's, there's still the space for, for um, athletes to be politicized. And I think you could also, if we had like a bar graph, you could make a case that athletes are saying and doing more political things now, for example, than they were like in the mid-1990s when Jordan was at his apex. Like, so if we were looking at a bar graph, it's not like, the 60s down. It's like, okay, the 60s, wow, really bad in the mid-90s, really bad. But then in recent years, you've had a real uptick of things. I mean, Steve Nash and um, Sean Avery of the Rangers have both filmed commercials uh, for marriage equality in New York, for gay marriage. Like they have filmed PSAs. Uh, Grant Hill and Jared Dudley filmed PSAs against homophobia. People might have seen them uh, during the playoffs about gay shouldn't mean stupid. And, you know, a, a, a CEO for the Suns came out of the closet recently, Rick Welts. Now, you could have one or two conclusions for this. Either the Phoenix Suns organization is the ultimate rainbow-colored Shangri-La that ever lived, because they also knew the Phoenix Suns, or that there actually is politics happening in sports in a dynamic fashion. If we suffer, and then I didn't even get into Chris Douglas Roberts, Richard Mendenhall, I mean, critical voices about Osama bin Laden's uh, execution and then dumping him uh, in the ocean Accord in accordance with Muslim law. They dumped him in the ocean, but just so to be clear. Um, and it, it was an amazing thing because I live in D.C. and the debate in D.C. after bin Laden was killed was just like, okay, uh, should Obama get all the credit or should Bush get some of the credit too? And that was like the range of the debate. And then you have Chris Douglas Roberts put out um, a couple of tweets where he says, okay, uh, a trillion dollars, almost a million lives. Uh, all for this one person? Are we going to ask if this was worth it? And it started a discussion. Unfortunately, the discussion it started was more like sports media people saying this guy should just shut up and play. But yet still, it got out there in the oxygen and started a discussion. And so I think there are reasons why there's more politics today. One reason is that I think there's greater crisis in the world today. And I think that affects athletes like it affects all of us. But another reason is I really do think social media allows athletes the ability to feel like they can speak without filter and hit their Twitter feed if they feel something and they have to get it off their chest. If there's anything we suffer from, and I think this is a problem that has to do generally with level of struggle and its connection with mass media, it's that like whatever the next shiny bauble is, we're then looking at that. Like, oh, Chris Douglas, Rob, oh, Rashad, oh, you know, and it's, and it's like there's not enough time that's, been, that, that's really given for reflection 
on the politics that athletes are involved in and what they're saying and what they're doing. And I